We will prove that the sequence converges and the limit of the sequence exists. And this limit is one of the most important limits in all of mathematics. This is the limit which leads to the basis of the initial logarithm. So first of all, let's prove that this limit exists. And so the first step of the proof will be to show that this sequence is bounded, and we can actually show that for any n that is greater or equal than 2, this sequence for every n is bounded between 2 and 3. Uh, and, okay, so n is greater than 2, because here in case of 1, then this is just equal to 2. It doesn't really matter. The important thing is that this sequence is bounded from above. So let's see how do we do it. So in the proof, this is just a declaration of, the, of what we want to prove. And here we start uh, with this is what we want to prove, that this is at least 2. Uh, and well, at this stage, it's not justified, but I'll justify it in a moment. So now let us use the binomial formula to compute this expression. OK, and so what we have in using the binomial formula is that, OK, 1 to the power of n is 1, and then n choose 1 is n times 1 over n, and similarly we're going to have here n choose k, n to the 1 over n to the power of k, and then 1 to the power of n minus k. So we're going to have the sum. And now let us rewrite this sum. So again, uh, since, uh, as we said, this is n and this is 1 over n, then this product is just 1, so we get that this equals for any n that is at least uh, 2 is 1 plus 1, which is at least two, and those terms are positive. So this is already justified. And now we will uh, make some computational efforts to show that this is bounded above uh, by three. So um, let's uh, proceed with our computation. So we will have to use the formula for the binomial coefficient and now rearrange this expression. So basically what we're using that n choose k, the general term here, uh, it's n factorial, divided by uh, n minus k factorial and divided by k factorial. So um, in one of the lectures on my videos, I showed that this is in fact the binomial coefficient. Uh, if we take n factorial and divide on the top and divide it by n minus k factorial at the bottom, this is the expression on top and then we have to divide this by k factorial. And this is n times uh, 1 over n to the power of k. This is the general term and we sum those ter terms of those form up to one, to, uh, 1 over n to the power of n. And now uh, what we're going to do is we'll make some rearrangement because see we have here n to the power of k and here we actually have k terms, right? Because this is n is like n minus 0 and times n minus 1 and up to n minus k minus 1. So here we have actually exactly k terms because from 0 to k minus 1, they're exactly k numbers. And now this n, one of n's here would be reduced with this n. And another n, we could have n over n, which is 1, minus 1 over n. And similarly, we'll uh, separate this fraction and just divide by n each such expression. So here, for example, we're going to have 1 minus k minus 1 over n. So uh, rearranging this, what we have is that we have this sum is actually the sum of the following form. And notice this pattern that we almost what we have here is 1 over k factorial. This is the general term and times some coefficient. So let us think of this sum as the sum of 1 over k factorial. And the factorials appear for n's power from uh, 1 up to uh, n. All the factorials and all the factorials have this uh, have some coefficient here, right? And this is one over one factorial. If you want to uh, see this pattern, and this one is another extra one on a side, so to say. And now, how this coefficient looks? Well, it's product of numbers one minus one over n, and here n is at least two. So those numbers are all positive numbers that are strictly smaller than one. But as n gets bigger, then each term here is closer to 1, right? So if we think of it as like you know, letting n be very, very big or tend to infinity, then this term tends, almost tends to 1. We need to be careful here because there are infinitely many terms and we don't want to go um, into this complication. But let's just think of it that this coefficient is strictly positive, but no more than 1 here. And this is the coefficient of 1 over k factorial. Uh, I know I'm uh, a bit dwelling on this, but this will simplify matters a bit later. So, uh, yeah. So this is what we have. And now, since uh, we uh, proved 
this product is n is at least 2, and each term here is strictly smaller than 1, and those are positive terms, then each coefficient of this 1 over k factorial, so we have this 1, it is this 1, and this is 1 over 1 factorial, and then all those uh, factorials that we see here, 1 over 2 factorial up to 1 over n factorial, here it comes with a coefficient that is strictly smaller than 1, so if we replace it, we remove this coefficient and replace this by 1, then this sum is, of course, bigger than this sum, right? Strictly bigger. And now we're going to use another identity. And uh, so here we'll justify it in just one moment. Basically, we are going to uh, replace this sum of 1 over n factorial by this sum of the geometric series. And why would we do that? Well, because... Uh, the formula for the, for the geometric series uh, is uh, for the geometric sequence for its sum is quite simple and we have a formula for it. So we can compute this and we have a bound from above. So using the formula, basically what I'm saying here is that each term here, uh, if we're starting from, uh, we'll, we'll see it in a moment. Uh, so suppose that we have the sum, then for this sum as k runs from 1 up to n, then the formula for the geometric sequence says that this is this is just the sum. This is something known. And we've proved it in the previous lecture, the formula for the geometric sequence using the scoping series. So now we have that this, this sum is that. So we have 1 minus something positive. So what we have here on top is strictly smaller than 1. And here we have 1 minus 1 half, which is just 2. So we have something that is smaller than 1 times 2. And this is so all of this is smaller than 2, and plus 1, it's strictly smaller than 3. And now let us justify this replacement. Well, basically, uh, what we used is that 2 to the power of n minus 1 is smaller than n factorial. And, okay, let's see for n equals 1, then it's 2 to the power of 0, it's no, not bigger than 1, right? And for, uh, for n, which is 2, we have here 2, and this is 1 times 2, it's 2. So it's no bigger than 2, right? And then for n equals 3, it also holds. It's 2 to the power of uh, 2, okay? Uh, which is 4, and here uh, it's 1 times 2 times uh, 3 factorial is 6, okay? And from this point on, we don't, uh, from, from uh, n, that, which is bigger than 3, we no longer need to check this. Why? Well, because if n is at least 4, then what we could say here is that we can split this 4 into 2 here and 2 here, and then this product of n factorial for n, which is at least 4, is product of numbers, all of which are at least 2, right? So we replace this 1 by 2 and replace this 4 by 2, and then we have product of numbers, which are, um, we have like uh, 2 times 2, and all the other numbers are bigger than, uh, than 2 here in the product, so the product is going to be bigger than the power of 2, uh, and the power of n minus 1. So, of course, uh, we have this equality. It's uh, inequality, it's kind of obvious, and we can also prove it by induction. So now what follows is that uh, if 2 to the power of n minus 1 is smaller than n factorial, then uh, dividing by taking 1 over, we have this bond, right? So if each term in this sum we replace by 1 over 2 to the power of n minus 1, we bound this sum by this sum, this one stays, this is this one is this one, and then this sum can be replaced uh, by this sum, and we'll have a bound from above. And this sum we have already computed, therefore this sequence for every n is not bigger than 3, and so it is bounded above. So now let us prove that the sequence is monotone, and therefore by the monotone convergence theorem, we will see that the sequence converges. Okay, that's, I, I just said this. Uh, so, to see this, we will compare the formula that we got for the nth element and for the n plus four, four, uh, first element and uh, n plus one element, and see uh, that this one is bigger. Okay, so let's do it. So, we have computed that the formula for the nth uh, element of the sequence is the, is, is the sum of this form, where we have uh, this one, say, on the side, and then we have 1 over k factorial with this coefficient, which is strictly smaller than 1, and we have all these uh, uh, factorials from 1 up to n, okay? And so, how would, how, how would the formula for a n plus 1 look? Well, we would have all the same 
uh, coefficients of the factorials of one uh, of the factorial reciprocals, so to say. Uh, so this one is this one, and this one is one uh, over one factorial. That's the same. And the coefficient here, so here we're going to have uh, a n plus one over n uh, plus one. And so this number is strictly bigger, this coefficient of 1 over 2 factorial is strictly bigger than this coefficient y, because 1 over uh, n plus 1 is uh, smaller than 1 over n, and therefore 1 minus this will be bigger. And similarly for the general term, 1 over k factorial, well, we just have that all those numbers here are smaller, and y and mi minus this is bigger. So the coefficient of the reciprocal of k factorial here is bigger than the corresponding coefficient here, and this holds for all the terms, plus another term that we have here is 1 over n plus 1 factorial, which does not appear in the sum, but this is a positive term. So um, each, each, uh, each element that appears here appears here with a bigger coefficient. Each reciprocal factorial appears here in this sum with a bigger coefficient, plus another positive term, so of course an plus 1 is uh, bigger or um, yeah n not not smaller than a um, a n and therefore that uh, yeah i just stated this in words and therefore what we have yeah so we see that this term is strictly smaller than this term and all the reciprocals of factorials appear here and therefore uh, this contains an extra and also this contains an extra positive term so uh which is positive uh, so this um, so a n plus one is strictly bigger than a n or bigger or equal for every n, which proves that the sequence converges, right? So this proves that a n is smaller or equal than n plus one for every n, which is at least one, which means that the sequence is monotonically increasing, bounded above by three, and thus by the monotone convergence uh, theorem, this sequence converges. And let us denote this limit to which it converges by the number e. Now, E is a very important number in, in all of mathematics and in, sci in science in general, and it is E after the uh, mathematician Leonard Euler who discovered this number uh, as he was, uh, was trying to, he computed the derivative of the logarithm and he found that this is actually the natural basis. So if you take the derivative, uh, we will see it in the future, of log in the basis of A uh, of X, this function f of x, then basically the only basis, the only value for a for which the derivative of this log uh, a to x is 1 over x is this natural basis. And so this number is called after Euler. And uh, well, its, uh, its value can be calculated approximately. Uh, we can use the sequence. Uh, by the way, uh, th there's an even more efficient way to compute this. And its numerical value, approximate numerical value, uh, is given by this. Of course, its goal goes indefinitely. Um, yeah, so uh, this E, it's after Euler. And, okay, this number is super important, and it's just as important, uh, I would say, as pi. And also, Euler has discovered, if this number isn't enough, Euler has also discovered another formula, which is absolutely magical and marvelous, and probably one of the most beautiful formulas in all of mathematics. It's beyond the scope of the current course, but I will just mention it. Look at this formula. It connects the five of the most important numbers in all of mathematics. It's the basis of the natural logarithm E. It's, of course, pi. It's the identity, it's the identity additive identity element in the field of the real numbers or the complex numbers. It's the multiplicative identity and uh, the, the square root of minus one, uh, the, the complex number. So we will not go uh, uh, into it, what, what it exactly means. But this marvelous connection is just amazing. It shows just how beautiful mathematics is. And moreover, just one remark uh, about E is that this number we will prove in the course later that this number is actually irrational so it goes indefinitely and there is no uh, repetitive pattern here there is no pattern that repeats itself otherwise it would be uh, rational so it's irrational and, and we will prove it in this course and with more efforts it's also possible to use techniques from calculus to prove that this number is transcendental which means that there is no polynomial with integer coefficients 
such that e is the root of this polynomial. So for example, if you look at the square root of uh, 2, for example, uh, then this number is irrational, uh, but it's a root of the polynomial x squared minus 2, which has integer coefficients. So now let us see what we have uh, uh, seen in this computation. We have seen, uh, I want to get back to this point. So we have seen that the uh, nth term in the sequence here, right? This is the nth element of the sequence. It is smaller than this sum. But actually it turns out that this uh, nth element of the sequence, this is a n, and the sum, conver they converge to the same limit. Uh, and we will see that the more efficient way of computing E uh, with the Taylor series, we'll prove it in the future, is to compute this sum. And so just let us, let, let us just see in Desmos how it looks. So uh, here we have a list of uh, numbers from 1 up to 10,000. This is our sequence AN, and the values of AN and AN are plotted here in green. And, well, in Desmos, the constant e is known, and this is this constant, and this is this limit to which both sequences converge. Uh, and bn is the sequence defined by this sum of the reciprocal factorials. Uh, k runs from, uh, from 0 to n, and remember that the factorial of 0 is 1. And we see that uh, this sequence uh, bn, of course, bigger, we computed that the sequence is bigger, but they converge to the same limit. It's just, it's not a proof, but I'm showing this to you just visually to see how then here quite rapidly they, uh, they are close to this number. And this sequence bn converges really, really, really fast to, uh, to this uh, value, to the limit. Okay, so um, this is it about uh, e, but of course we'll uh, get back to this number in the future.